So, Alex, uh, it's uh, it's great you've taken time away from Paris to uh, to come to Copenhagen and uh, and cycle along the roads with me here. It's uh, it's very good of you to do that. Um, so, listen, I was going to tell uh, you, you know, your uh, your JAMA paper uh, recently that that was a that was a that's that's created quite a storm, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a quite a nice story because. Um, so what we wanted to do is to compare, was to compare the practice patterns between uh, two countries, France and United States, to see uh, what was the difference in terms of allocation and resource and the use of uh, organ procurement, kidney procurement. Yeah. And uh, so it was very nice, you know, to compare, you know, and to take our differences to draw some meaningful conclusion. The main conclusion actually was that um, the donor age was very different uh, from United States as compared to France, meaning that we are taking older and older donors. Um, and the consequence is that uh, from many of the kidneys that are recovered for transplant and then uh, discarded, many of them would have had a 100% chance of being transplanted in France. So we were really struck by this uh, result. So, so, I mean, what are you saying? Are you saying that, that the U.S. Is, is potentially discarding kidneys that could, could have provided good transplants to people? Yeah, exactly. Not to say all discarded kidneys in the U.S. could have been used, but, you know, among the 3,500, which is quite a lot, it's uh, what we transplant in France every year, many of those kidneys could have provided survival benefit to the so, patients. So, so why is that happening in the U.S., do you think? I mean, we, we have colleagues, we, we have colleagues in the U.S., they, they think very similar to us. So, so why is that happening? I think it's a very complex question, but most of that is related to the disincentives and the report cards, meaning that the scrutiny that the, uh, the, you know, the procurement system has on the institution made the surgeon and the nephrologist kind of reluctant to use the skinny because we know that they will provide a, a little bit lower graft survival as compared to perfect uh, disease donor kidneys. So this disincentive and the report cards made that they started to be afraid of pushing the limits. Mm, okay. And I think that's the main difference with what uh, Europe in general has uh, so, taken. So let me. Uh, so in France, do you not have that scrutiny? I mean, in, in, in the UK, we have scrutiny of units. We have Kusum triggers. Uh, you know, I will be asked to, to look into a unit. Uh, do, do you not have that? Uh, we do have an allocation system and an allocation score, but I think that uh, in France, but it was the same also in Spain, in Italy, and within Eurotransplant, that they uh, kind of embarked uh, 10 years ago with the all for all programs, yeah. providing kidneys from all donors to all recipients, uh, with you know the hypothesis that many uh, patients on the waiting list are getting older and dialy and they're on dialysis, and this is really bad for them in terms of you know uh, quality of life, quantity of life, and also cost for society right and, and and do you think that the, the, the one of the, the things that we're missing out is that we shouldn't be comparing uh, one transplant with another we should be sometimes comparing transplant with waiting list the, from time on a waiting list sure you're absolutely correct and uh, so first of all from a methodological uh, standpoint it's very difficult to compare patients having a transplant to waitlisted patients just because there are some obvious indication bias but now the methodology and the math allowed us to explore doing some kind of propensity matching scoring, yeah. finding the best match on the waiting list. And I yeah. think it's, your, your remark is absolutely true. We need to dig that a little bit you know, further and to draw and to change this gray area and give recommendation based on a data-driven approach. It's one of the things we've done in the UK is to, is to uh, quote survival from times on the waiting list uh, rather, than, rather than times from transplantation. And, and uh, I, I think that's a real very important message to get across but but in the US what I mean where do you, do you think this will have quite a, an impact the uh, the paper so first of all uh, there was a quite a nice alignment of stars because uh, you are aware that there was this uh, uh, White House order uh, which executive came, order, executive yeah. order, yeah. which came out uh, in uh, July, and then the paper was released in August. So the paper was kind of aligned with the <laughs> unmet needs yeah. stressed by this uh, yeah. executive order. Yeah. And the main uh, message was that we need more kidneys. We need to increase donation and organ procurement. And one of the, you know, uh, it's not all about better use of these donors, but uh, you have the kidney pair donation system the use of Hep C yes. uh, kinase. But I think this uh, resource 
of the kinase recovery and discarded could uh, translate into huge uh, benefit for the US society. So taking the example of Europe uh, to draw a conclusion and provide path towards improving the allocation system in the US is kind of cool. Okay. Now, we're near, nearly uh, where we want to be on our bike ride, uh, but, yeah. but just briefly tell me, I know you've got another paper out in the BMJ, uh, just uh, like, uh, like almost in, uh, in the last few minutes. Exactly, that's the, the iBox paper yeah. uh, you're referring to. Oh yes, that was the last seven years of my life, so I'm quite, <laughs> you know, very happy, you know, about the outcome. Uh, and the integrative box is uh, really making sense with um, allocation, but also moving downwards, you know, uh, in patients who get a kidney transplant. It's basically a risk pronostication system. Huh? that provides patients and clinicians uh, with a really uh, high predictive performance, the likelihood of the kidney to fail in 3, 5, 7, and 10 years, plus the patient trajectory with time. Big consortium, 19 centers, four randomized controlled trials, a lot of efforts, a lot of struggle. So and I'm getting gray hair. <laughs> so, so what you're trying to do is to get surrogate endpoint, is that right? So that, so that help, which will help hugely in terms of trials and, uh, and, and new interventions that we are doing. You're completely right. I think our field really needs surrogate endpoint because we cannot stand with the current state of the art for prognostication where we wait for 10 years to have the hard endpoints. We need something earlier, something robust, something that meets the requirement from agencies. Yeah. And, uh, and we need that, the patient needs that we need new drugs, new drug development. So we need the, to embark upon the next generation clinical trials, where the computer assistant will project patients okay. on the long term run. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess uh, you know I'm impressed. I'm impressed that you're uh, getting all of this uh, data from with your group, and I hear your group were the uh, the, the winners uh, in the uh, in the ESOT uh, in the ESOT. What was it? The pro uh, working together team. Uh, so uh, I'm impressed. Uh, keep up the good work. It's been a fantastic ride. It's been great to run uh, along the Copenhagen uh, trails with you. Thank you very much, and uh, see you again. Thank you so much. Okay.